Luigi, this is Omnigent here, and today I'm going to be talking about zombie maps, specifically about replayability. What makes a map replayable? What mechanics make you keep playing a map like Mob of the Dead or Doris time and time again and enjoying it every single time you play it? But then you have a map like Buried, which is a map whose life cycle is as long as it takes until the next map comes out and then you forget about it completely. Well, firstly, there are essentially three ways of playing zombie maps on your own in solo cooperatively with friends working together and public matches playing against randoms who you don't know. Now, if a map can cater to these three styles of play and make each of them a unique and playable experience in its own right, completely different to the others, then it can essentially triple its life cycle threefold. So you play it on solo by yourself, but then when you get bored, you can just go on cooperative and play it with your friends and it's a different experience, so it really increases the replayability of the map. Now, some maps do this well, in Mop the Dead, for example, the tasks to acquire the parts of the plane differ from solo to co-op. You receive a different level of afterlife, which affects how aggressive you are and how many parts you can hold at once, etc. Which means that Mob of the Dead is a completely different experience on co-op. There's a lot more teamwork involved when you play with other people than by yourself. Now, you compare that to a map like Buried, which doesn't differ from solo to co-op. Apart from Lenny takes longer to construct buildables when you feed him candy. And that's it. And not only is it very similar between solo and co-op, which doesn't offer two different play experiences, but there are also so many opportunities for an incompetent or malicious player to upset the flow of the map. The time bomb, the ability to scare Lenny and make him run back to his cage, unexpectedly triggering a ghost wave, holding or wasting booze, candy, etc. The list is very long on how much you can screw up your team in Buried, even unintentionally. And that makes playing on public matches not only tedious, but irritating meaning that no one really wants to play Buried in public and essentially a third of your game time playing a map is gone. Now catering to these features isn't everything. Durries is almost identical if you're playing solo or co-op, especially in Black Ops 1 where the quick revive difference was added. But it's still thought of as a map with replayability, so why is this? Well, one thing a map needs is difficulty or the lack of it. While difficult maps like Five, Shangri-La and Tunic Sent Mob of the Dead are popular with experienced players because they look for a challenge in maps, easy maps are popular with everyone, from noobs who play it repeatedly just because it's the only map they can get past round 10 on, to experienced players who may just give it a passing fling because they want to relax, not think and just play a map, not, you know, not concentrate too hard and just play. And Dereze was an easy map, we may not think of it as one now, but in World of War it was simply because it contained the most utilities, specifically the Pack-a-Punch machine, which made it far easier than, say, Shinonima or Verruckt or Nacht, because it had more things that you could get to improve your chances of survival, so it was the easiest map. And maps that are easy, like Doris, Kino, Totem, and Ascension, are popular because they can be enjoyed by all players to some degree. But what I'd buried, most players find that mind-numbingly easy, so why isn't that as popular as these other easy maps? Well, Buried unfortunately has the worst of both worlds. If you think about the map, but not through the eyes of someone who plays zombies a lot, think of it through the eyes of an idiot, if you will. Figuring out how to get your precious juggernaut with the booze is challenging for uh, an experienced player. The paralyzer isn't a point-shoot insta-kill weapon like the thunder gun, it has more subtle uses. Getting to the ghost house with your points without knowing the spawns is impossible. And a noob would find it hard to survive in the maze long enough to accumulate these points again, so they'll never pack a bunch of weapons. And so bad players find buried hard, but experienced players who know Lenny's mechanics, you know how to use and abuse the paralyzer, how to navigate the ghost house, etc., find buried very easy. This leaves buried in a very awkward spot where it's too confusing for casuals but too tedious for dedicated players, and that's why it's got no replayability because it's the worst of both worlds. Finally, the last feature that I can think of that makes a map replayable is simply its looks. If a map is designed well, not in terms of gameplay, but in terms of aesthetics, the colour scheme, the environment, the setting, the lighting, the soundtrack, even the map's unique weapons, if everything comes together, then the map gains a certain character, a certain beauty that doesn't necessarily affect the gameplay of the map, but affects your memories of the map, which is, after all, why you'd return. Take the reason Mob the Dead as examples of maps being done well. In Doris, you've got the atmosphere of this burnt out ruins of a Nazi prototype weapons factory. You're fighting through these burnt out labs, using massive brass teleporters to get across the map, wielding the DGG and the monkey bomb when it was a new and imaginative weapon rather than, well, 
If the map doesn't have any good secondaries, Cherokee seemed to throw the monkey bomb into the map. But back then, it was a new and original, and it had a lot more character there. Or, for example, on Mob of the Dead, where you're on Alcatraz Island with a warden case new, an armory of monster weapons at your disposal, and it has original characters played by professional actors, and that really brings the whole environment of the map together, which is an experience that you really want to replay. So even if you might not enjoy the map as much because it's more difficult than you might prefer, because it has such a unique environment, it does have replayability because you want to experience this over and over again. Now, compare this to, say, Transit. It has no unique setting, it's just in a town somewhere. It has no unique weapons except for the Thrustodyne, which is as tiresome as it is to make as it is to use, and the EMP grenades, which are, to all intents and purposes, useless. Then there's the colour scheme, environment and light in the map, which can be summarised in two words really, lava, fog. Then there's the soundtrack. When you think of sounds from transit, everyone thinks of denizens screeching, and that's not something you ever want to hear again. So for a map to have a high replayability factor, it must cater to lots of play styles, it must be relatively easy to suit everyone's tastes, and it must look good. But even though this seems like every map should have that, if every map did follow this formula and try and get good replayability, we would end up with every map being very similar to each other. So while I think replayability is important in map design, it shouldn't get in the way of the variation and individuality of all the maps. So even if there are maps that not that many people play over again, such as Buried or Shangri-La, it is important to have these maps in Zombies just so we can have unique experiences. But anyways, that's my thoughts on replayability. This has been Omagent. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.